Mohamed Shakir joins us from Archer Exploration to give us all an education on quantum computing and what Archer is up to with that. Nice to have you back. Oh, glad to be here. So I suppose we should start with a definition, uh, an explanation. What is quantum computing? What's quantum technology? So quantum computing simply represents the next stage in, in computing uh, and, and the next stage of advanced computing. And what will it impact? Well, it has the potential to impact across all sectors reliant on computational power, and that can include uh, emerging sectors like artificial intelligence and big data, but also the financial sectors, uh, cryptocurrencies, new currencies, and uh, also in the pharmaceutical industries and new drug design and development. I know there's a lot of people working on quantum issues around the world, especially here in Australia. What in particular have you been solving? So it's, I'm happy you mentioned that because in Australia we, we do have a critical mass of uh, experience in quantum technology and materials, and which is fantastic. Uh, quantum technology, it's, it's a really diverse field, multidisciplinary, and a lot of different challenges that exist. When we talk about the, the materials challenges that exist, and of course with Archer this is our primary focus, uh, the materials form a key component of the technologies because the technology itself is tangible. Uh, and we need the materials for it to be tangible. Uh, we, we focus on the materials problem and, and up until now, the materials that have been used to, to perform quantum computing either function at really low temperatures uh, or if they function at room temperatures, they're very difficult to integrate into modern electronics. So the solution that we've, well, that I came up with together with colleagues uh, in the past at the University of Sydney was to combine the best aspects of those two fields. And, we resulted in a material for the first time that could do the quantum processing at room temperature while being able to be integrated into modern electronics. So Mohammed, you've touched on the, uh, the value of R&D there. Can you tell me a bit more about how you're funding R&D, about how you're situated to take advantage of the global race in progressing quantum? Was, yeah, again, it's important to note that uh, a few years ago, Australia was contributing about 5% of global uh, spend on R&D in quantum computing. And together with North America and Europe, it was 70% uh, of, of global spend on R&D. Yeah, it really emphasizes the high value uh, in doing the R&D and leading the way and being the first mover. Um, in order to, to capitalize on our R&D, you have to have the right people, the right infrastructure, and I think the right financial and legal instruments to navigate your way through a very complex stakeholder map. And you know, for us, executing on this, we, we are working towards uh, having that uh, license with the University of Sydney, an exclusive license, and that can form a, a really key uh, instrument for us as we progress forward with our uh, development work. So Mohammed, of course, these markets are emerging as you are developing these materials, this technology. Can you tell me about how you're going to capture market share? Tell us about the nature of the markets you're going after. Well, I can tell you what we're not going to do. <laughs> what we're not going to do is reinvent a business model or come up with something quirky and outrageous. So uh, there are existing business models that have been successfully employed in, in the semiconductor industry, which is a very mature industry worth you know more than $500 billion of revenue a year. Uh, so the, the business model that is applied uh, to the existing semiconductor industry, we can apply in the development of a specialty core componentry of, of the quantum computing uh, architecture. And that would be into developing the quantum processor. And the quantum processor that we'll be developing is one uh, that involves the carbon qubit processing. So this is what we're looking to do. And you know, traditionally, multinational companies that engage in this kind of business model, they sell directly to end users and customers, or they go through uh, OEMs. So Mohammed, obviously the markets that you're going to are developing at the same time as you're developing solutions for it. Can you tell me about the balance of innovating technologies and commercializing these technologies now and moving forwards for Archer? Well, they go hand in hand. So the technical development, uh, again, it's, it helps and, and it underpins the market growth and it goes hand in hand with our commercial development. Of course, with our commercial development, uh, there's a whole bunch of facets to that and uh, our, our milestones quarterly. So we just look to hit those milestones and uh, we're looking forward to it uh, and, and that negotiation with the University of Sydney uh, coming through. And tell me what sets Archer apart in the quantum world with the work that you're doing and commercializing? Well, first and foremost, the materials that we need to build the quantum processor are in our inventory. 
Uh, and what I mean by that is our wholly owned subsidiary carbon allotropes in the inventory of carbon allotropes, which is an online marketplace to uh, sell carbon materials. We, we have the critical component which is able to process that qubit uh, at room temperature. We also have the people, so I'm listed as a co-inventor on the patent that we're negotiating with the University of Sydney. And uh, also just having that network and that growth uh, to be able to uh, access global networks uh, that, are, that are in the know. So we're in a very critical early stage uh, of the development of this uh, technology. Uh, and the IP itself will allow us to progress forward and to develop the technology and, and it has something tangible and also to be able to enter markets in a very strong position in the future. It sounds like exciting stuff, a massive breakthrough. What are you doing to commercialize this? What's the, the business model? How do you sell it? Yeah, so in terms of the technology, it's really important that um, I can't overemphasize how important a technical development is. And this forms a very, very core part of the commercialization. And the reason why is because the market growth is dependent on advances in technology development, all right, so reaching those technical milestones. Uh, and for us, that forms the key component there. And a lot of uh, the work that we'll be doing involves realizing a technology that forms the basis of, uh, of IP, intellectual property, that we look to license from the University of Sydney. Very exciting stuff. So coming up, what are those big milestones, those big catalysts that uh, you and your investors should be most aware of? Yeah, so we're currently in negotiations with the University of Sydney uh, for IP and, and a license for that IP, an exclusive license uh, that uh, could be applied in jurisdictions all around the world, including Australasia and uh, North America and Europe. So it's and, quite exciting. Yeah, remind us, what's that overarching vision for Archer Exploration? So with Archer, we look to develop and integrate advanced materials in technologies in human health, reliable energy, and of course, in the quantum fields. And I know you want to dominate, so we'll be watching your progress very closely. Thanks for your time today, Mohammed. No worries.